Hello and welcome to The Breakdown with Orla Shinoui and... Greg Rutherford. I love that. <laughs> you're getting more dramatic with that, Greg. Time, each you're, time. you're hamming up your part. Well, I you think. know, yeah, it's, it's, it's just two words, but it's got to be powerful. <laughs> Three, you got the width as well. I'm giving you lots of space no, you to width. express yourself. I just say Oh, I did say width. I took that from you too. That no, I can see why you're having to big up your part now. I don't give you very much. <laughs> anyway, um, here we are once again, and we have a really interesting guest, but I say that every time, don't I? But it's true. Um, Jess Learmonth is Olympic triathlon champion, and she won uh, the mixed relay triathlon mm -hmm. in Tokyo. What's so interesting about her is her backstory, obviously. Um, but we see with elite athletes so many times that they come through the ranks, don't they? And they get progressively better. And that's how they end up elite athletes, yeah. really. They, they win in the junior ranks, they have some failures. Um, then they go to the senior ranks, mixed success, blah, 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 blah. It all comes good in the end. It, it all comes good in the end. Yeah. Jess went off. She had a life. She went off traveling in Australia with her boyfriend. Mm -hmm. um, she got a job in a supermarket. Mm -hmm. And um, by her own admission, I should say, just in her own words. Yeah. She put on some weight, she's unhealthy, unfit, and decided to get back into sport again. Lo and behold, she jumps into triathlon, and within a couple of years, she's Olympic champion. It's amazing. It's incredible to see, yeah. I mean, obviously, her background with a, a little bit of swimming stuff in there obviously helps with that side of it. But to try and master three events, and you did just call it mastering as well, uh, it's incredible. She's literally the antithesis of me as an athlete. Mm. Literally, the endurance on a bike could never do. Swimming, I only just learned a couple of years ago. And running long distance, I'm, it's, I'm not built to do any of this. So I find it fascinating when speaking to somebody that can take it to that level and be that successful. But equally, have the, the break like you've mentioned and everything else, that, that's incredible. And there's so many kids out there, and actually young adults that are probably thinking, well, my time's gone, I've mm. not been doing it anymore. But actually, listening to her story, you start to realise, do you know what? Maybe there's a chance for a lot of people to get back in there and give it a go. But I think that's true of so many things, and that's why I wanted to talk to her, because... It, I think it's hard sometimes in life as an adult to find new drive and new focus and go at it like you're going to be the very best because you maybe think, I've learned everything I'm going to learn and I'm just going to get better at what I do. But actually to learn something completely new, which for her was a new sport, is just fascinating. I mean, I was like a junior athlete and then I went off and went to university, discovered alcohol. I didn't come back in again. <laughs> you know, so I know how difficult that is. And, and triathlon is one of these disciplines that fascinates me in terms of the actual discipline of yep. it, the, the personal discipline that it takes. I tried to train, not even do, not even start, not even complete a triathlon. I tried to train for one and I got so bored with the swimming, I just gave up. I remember being on holiday and there was a 12 meter swimming pool and I got so bored going back and forward, I just thought, nah. Yeah, this well, isn't for me. It, it shoots out the water straight away. People that just say, well, if you, if you don't focus from this from a young age, you're never going to yeah. make it. That's the incredible thing about it. It really is. Look, I, I've always talked There's about... There's hope for us all, No, there are, absolutely. We should all go, let's just try another sport. <laughs> I've never or done Or another that anything. It doesn't have to be sport. That's the point, isn't no, it? No, of course. And that is the big thing, isn't it? Like, and, and I think in life, you need to be able to take these risks and take these chances when they're, they're sort of shown to you. And if anything, this chat is, is the perfect perfect way to set that up for anybody who's thinking about it yeah hopefully at least that's what we were hoping to get out of it and i hope you do too here is the breakdown with jess learmonth well jess here we are in leeds not that far away from where you live you're about half an hour from here is that right yep, yep, yeah yeah just on the outskirts but i've ventured in to the center for you too thank you <laughs> what have you been up to then what have we torn you away from today just a bit just training nothing yeah like nothing exciting but the sun's out so just loving life roaming around leeds and with my shorts and t-shirt what nice. does your training involve these days then uh well this morning i had a swim in beeston if you know in leeds it's a pretty nice place yeah. um then how much of a swim I want to know, hang on, I want to know about Beast. I want to hear what you said. It's, it's a nice place, so go on, please elaborate. Are you trying to plan your holidays? Yes, absolutely. Okay. I, I don't think you'd want a holiday there. Oh, really? Oh, so <laughs> anybody, not. anybody who's listening that lives there, you're now about to <laughs> absolutely <laughs> annihilate them. Listen, Let's go. No one that lives there is listening to this. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> Even better. Oh, dear. Right. I'd be very surprised. Have you got anywhere else that you go for your swim training just in case they are listening and you're not allowed back yeah. again? <laughs> that is a good point. You should definitely no. consider that. It is really nice, to be fair. 
So, so we're recording. Nice. Just so you know, we are recording as well with video, so they'll see your facial expressions. <laughs> so I, I fear there's now no way for you to escape this. You might as well just say it. As it is. Just yeah, say it. To be fair, it's that nice that I then went for a run round Middleton Park, which is just round it, and it was very nice, very hilly. Oh. Um, and then went out on my bike round near me. This may sound like a really obvious question, but as a non-triathlete, do you always do all three together? <laughs> I said. It's funny because it sounds a stupid question, but it's actually not. Cause we, well, we actually do, yeah. Pretty yeah. much most days. Because I thought I didn't, but then you figure it out. I know, that's, again, that sounds really stupid. <laughs> but, yeah, it's just the difference in duration on each one. But majority of the time, apart from the weekend, we have no swim, which is delightful because I hate swimming. Why so, not on a weekend? Because uh, we always have, like, a run session and loads of riding. And don't know, we just never have. Just have a weekend off. Do you know, like work, you think, oh, thank God, it's the weekend. No swimming. <laughs> so swimming's the bit. So that's the the bit of the the job, if you like, that you find actually a job and a task. Why? why yeah. Why, why, why swimming rubbish? It's just really boring. Have you done it? <laughs> no, <laughs> it's well, so boring. actually, you've been interested in swimming. I only, I only, I only swimming. learned to have swim you? three years ago. Did you? Yeah. So 2019. Oh, so you um, can't find it that boring then. <coughs> no, I did find it quite. That stage, still, yeah. He's still excited. Yeah. About, like... Well, no. <laughs> but all mine was all open. I hate swimming in a swimming pool. I find it too hot. That's right. Weird. <laughs> That's weird Where I are you swimming? Pools. What? Like, you get Dave, to be still it's pretty Dave, cold. David, no, but then, oh, is, is that, oh, is it an indoor pool, is this? Yeah. Oh, I, I just assumed it was a lake you were in. Oh, no, no. Because I, like, I like open water Christ. swimming. Like, I find a lot. the concept of of <laughs> swimming being too hot absolutely yeah, too fascinating. Hot. I get way too hot in a swimming because pool. Because you jump into a swimming pool to kill time. Yeah, I get really hot. Yeah, and also, oh, really? Yeah. So random, you must be going to the wrong pools. It's freezing. <laughs> <laughs> you know you don't swim in a jacuzzi, yeah? yeah. Oh, that's where I've been going wrong. So I wonder why everybody really looks at me way. weird. <laughs> and I never go anywhere. I never <laughs> <laughs> but God, no, sorry, but what, why? <laughs> <laughs> but what, why? What? What? Apart from it just being boring, what? What's the? Because I mean, it's a big it, part it's of not your life. Social, so you can't really That's chat true. that much. Course, yeah. And I don't like to chat because I, I think get in and get out. Do you know, like when people are chatting, I think this is just taking longer. Can we just crack on? <laughs> so um, podcast is a really good yeah, you love activity this. then. Yeah. <laughs> And we can tell you're thrilled to be here. <laughs> well, no, I actually love a podcast, mate, because I listen to it all the time on bike. But you can't in the pool, so that's another reason okay. why. No podcasts allowed. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I like it when we swim hard, but swimming easy just bores me to tears. So. so are you not very good at stilling your mind then? Because what I quite like about swimming, and obviously I just swim for pleasure... But what I really like about it is just listening to my breathing and just listening to my thoughts. You know what I mean? You're, you're pulling a funny face. Yeah. But I find it quite yeah. meditative because my brain is always on the go. Yeah. But when I'm swimming, I feel like I have to switch off. I can't look at my phone. I can't listen to music. I can't communicate with anyone. And all I can hear is the very essence of being alive in my ears. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? True. Wow, that's quite a I think thought. I wouldn't mind that for like maybe once a week. <laughs> <laughs> no, but for like I go like, yeah, <laughs> twice a month. Yeah, <laughs> For like yeah, 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right for the warm up and then I'm bored. Yeah. But no, I know what you mean. It is quite peaceful. So if you do want to have a peaceful swim, it is that's quite decent. But but you do you do strike me as someone who's quite 100 miles an hour with your thoughts and, and with how you behave. Do you find it difficult to still your mind like that then? Yeah, I hate being relaxed. Or, really? Yeah, so like if... John, we do yoga art, and then at the end they do the 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 meditation part. Can't be doing with it. Just stresses me out more. Just been too relaxed. Do you find yourself? Is it is it your mind wanders to places you don't like, or is it just purely I just want to move? Yeah, it's really simple. Do you know what I mean? My mind's not wandering to anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's really like I wonder what I'm having for tea, or do you know what I mean? Right. It's not. It's not. There's not much going on, so. Yeah, I think I just get distracted. <laughs> What's going on? That I don't believe. No, no but it is interesting because obviously all has just said there that you can basically completely clear your mind and do it. I could never do that. There's but always, even if, whatever, there'd be things going on in my head. The thing is, though, like anything, it's a training, it's a practice. The mm. only reason I can do it is because, they talk about meditation practice, it's because you have to practice it. The only reason I can do it at all is because I force myself to do it because otherwise mm. my brain doesn't stop and then it's really hard 
to just keep going at the rate of your own brain sometimes. Mm. So I think everybody can learn it really, but I guess it's whether you need to and whether you want to. So. Yeah, and you dedicated to because I don't think I would. Yeah. Whereas John, my partner, I think he would be right into it. Not that he is, but he reads like um, books about monks and that. Oh, really? really? That's interesting. Yeah, it's his, one of his favourite books, actually. I can't remember what it's called, but... <laughs> I obviously didn't really engage with it. <laughs> but um, yeah, he's really into that sort of stuff. So what do you do to switch off then? Um, do sport. I know that sounds mad, but go for a run or a ride or... But what do you yeah. do away from your sport? Because there's so much training you do in a day, a yeah. couple of hours a day. What do you do for the rest of the time for fun? A lot of cooking. I really oh. like my food. Um, shit TV. I'm quite bad for that. Like what do you, what, what you mean, like reality TV? Um, or? Not so much, but... Um, yeah, documentaries. I'm trying to make myself sound. <laughs> but I do like sports. We're well, like well, one and the same stuff. person at the moment. Yes, exactly the same as me. But then stuff that I can just switch off and just mm. go on laptop or whatever. Yeah. So, but yeah. So tell us how you got into triathlon then, because it's a really interesting entry into the sport, mm. really, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bit random. I was working at Sainsbury's, and they did like a charity event. I'd just come back from travelling. Uh, I were a bit parky and I thought I'd get into a bit of exercise and they were doing a charity triathlon, did that and then kind of decided to enter a few local ones and then it just snowballed a bit and then I ended up on funding and well, snowball is one way of saying it, I guess. <laughs> yeah. it? Imagine that. Like yeah. working that, in that, Sainsbury's but, but at that's... the age of what? I reckon I were like twenty well, when I went to Sainsbury like twenty two. But isn't that fascinating? Like, you think there's going to be people listening that probably have a love for sport and whatever, so maybe never felt the opportunity. That's genuinely like an inspiring mm. thing for a lot of people, I imagine, to hear. Because I think most people just assume that you did it from a very young age, mm. you got into it, you worked incredibly hard all the time. All your life. And then you you reaped what you sowed. And I'm, I've always pushed a big thing, like life and performance are a really important part of it. I was always able to switch off and, and not always be obsessed with sport. And went through different periods of my life where I was probably a little bit naughty and went off the rails a little bit, whatever else. But then eventually came back to it and it all went, all went well. The amount of people that, and the amount of athletes as well that love telling you, basically, that's all they've ever done their mm. entire life. All they do, they do nothing but that. It's, it's and they all live like monks. Oh, Completely, it's, yeah. Triathlon, and, what you say in triathlon, it's like the life. You think, oh my it's Lord. boring. It, oh, I couldn't do it, me. But equally, what I often think, I think, I mean, athletes that, that sort of do, I don't know, often speaking and whatever else, they love doing it because they love pushing that narrative because I think people think, well, the athletes Makes think... Makes them exceptional, I guess. Yeah, and equally, they think that's what people want to hear. Mm. But I don't think, because I don't think it's true because the amount of athletes that I've seen from all different sports who do switch off, who do different things yeah. outside of the sport but they never talk about it because then they fear that they're, be, they're being considered as unprofessional because yeah. they don't do it but in actual fact my massive belief well it worked for me and possibly for yourself as well having that balance of being able to focus fully on your sport when you're doing it but equally switch off and do other things and, and whatever be that cooking watching documentaries etc that is actually how you manage to keep your mind in such a strong position to actually go out there and perform each time keep and I enjoying think, it enjoy it exactly yeah. that's the big thing so many athletes especially young athletes lose the love of sport because they listen to this I'll be honest crap from a lot of athletes where they basically say all you do is train all day you do nothing else you, you kill yourself and then you succeed it's not true in my opinion yeah, and I agree, and I think that's why part of the success I've had in triathlon is because of that, because I look at triathlon and think, well, if I have a bad race, what's the worst that could happen? Mm -hmm. Like, I just go home and it's me and John, like, I couldn't care less. And, I, 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 and it's difficult because, it, like you say, it comes across as if I'm, I don't care or I'm not professional, but it's not. It's just a different way of looking at Absolutely. it. It's like triathlon is not the world. Like there's so much going on outside and there's a normal life out there. And that's the thing I think with some athletes when they finish and then they go, oh, I've got to get a job. And yeah. then it's so, uh, the, the mental health's all over the place because they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. And it's because they've come from all the lives, just all they think about is triathlon. And you think, oh my God, there's definitely more out there for you. Although it's, it is good what they're doing and it's it's a good career. It's like, you just need to be a bit more open with things. And I, that's why I think I don't get nervous in races because I've am I just I've got a different perspective of it. And it's like, well, if I don't do well this week, there's another race next mm -hmm. month. So I, I won't worry about it. I'll just do another one. I find that really interesting that you said that 
it's a reason you don't get nervous and, and stuff. You don't need triathlon to be your life because I guess you had a life before getting into triathlon. You had a job, you've been traveling, you've taken a gap year. Mm. So all of that maybe has given you perspective, really. Yeah, because everything is a bonus. Like, I'm not being funny. I was working in Sainsbury's on, you know, minimum wage, just roaming through life, just, you know, week after week. And then you get this opportunity to, I don't know, travel the world, meet amazing people, do sport. I'm still on the start line. I think this is amazing. Like, I, I, even at the Olympics when we were, I had the individual, I had probably my worst result in a few years. Um, and then after the race had finished you were just walking around everyone was just miserable other than like the the three people that that meddled and i found it so bizarre because i was just loving life thinking this is amazing like walking around like a complete doylem but i i would just try to take it all in and really enjoy it and i just thought i wish everybody else would be a bit happier because it's like as long as you tried your hardest on that race what more could you have done like if you do so like in my training i try as hard as i can in the race, I try as hard as I can. And to me, it's simple. Get on the start line, as long as I try, and do the little things right, and try the, my very best. If the result's not what I want, then that, there's nothing I can do about it. So to me, it's so simple. So I just don't understand why... I don't know, that's just my... It's, it's perception, mindset. though, isn't it, I guess? that That's the big thing. And I think, similarly, so I worked a few jobs before I turned professional and sort of had a very normal life, if you like. And the amount of athletes as well have no clue, no clue about the wider world, what sort of normality mm, is. Yeah. I think that's similar to what you were just saying about, obviously, people come out the back end of sport, no clue what they're doing. Mm. The real world hits, and it really does affect them a lot. And I'd be interested, is there any other athletes, whether you're in the team or that you know of, that had that start as well, similar to yourself, where they worked jobs, had, again, I hate saying it like a normal life, because sport obviously isn't a normal life, mm. because for everything that the sportsmen and women do from training traveling the world doing these sorts of things it's not a normal life but were there any others do you know of and i'd be interested to know if you think that they're similar to you in the mindset of treating it as this incredible opportunity opposed to actually the end of the world when it doesn't mm. go quite quite right um thinking about it off the top of my head there i don't know any of them that have had jobs um, I know a few of them have never had a job interview in their life or anything, yeah. never been through that. I think, oh, look forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> You'll love it. It's so good. <laughs> Just um, you with the yeah, whole exactly. life experience. And you story. think uh, Olympics... Startless is hard. <laughs> you wait till you're at Sainsbury's having your interview. You, <laughs> you wait. Yeah. Teamwork. I've been there. Oh, <laughs> um, so yeah, no, not really. All of them have pretty much come from the like through the junior ranks. And if there's a few that have come from different sports, but then have been at uni, right. and then they've come into triathlon. Um, but no one's, I don't think, worked full time for like you know a few years or anything like that. See, I find that attitude so refreshing because in my job, I spent um, over a decade interviewing elite athletes. And, and it's something that I always find really sad, but so common amongst people at the top of their game is that I often think they're not enjoying it mm. because they can't enjoy it. And I remember sitting with Sir Dave Brailsford after he was the head of Team Sky and Knight and Eos, after the team had won maybe their fourth Tour de France, and asking him whether once, now that you've won it again, can you be happy? And he was like, well, no, of course not, because I've got to do it all over again. And I said to him, like, I find that really sad, sad yeah. that yeah. that you think, not that you think, I mean, he's hugely successful, but, but that that's quite a common mentality in elite sport, that you've got to be at the top of your game and you've got to, to, to know that it's the end of the world if you don't win, because that's the way you win. And I was asking him, like, when do you get to celebrate that then? Yeah. What, when is all the hard work <clears throat> worth it? Because often I think with elite athletes, it feels like it's not worth it until they retire, but then you've missed the chance yeah, to enjoy it. Exactly. It's like living the moment, like enjoy enjoy that time because it, it'll soon pass. And it has for like the Olympics, you know, it seems so long ago. Mm. And you've just got mm. to kind of try and take it in when you can. Cause, <clears throat> like I've heard of other like, athletes um, 
that you know didn't get a medal and they they might have retired or gone long because usually in triathlon you go from olympic and then you go a long course um and they're like i'm not i'm gonna do another cycle because i want that medal and i think mm. oh my what uh, like <laughs> what happens if you don't get it <laughs> and it's like what, what will that medal do for you because like for me obviously it, it's it's amazing and i'm so happy but i i just feel like i'd just be as content without the medal i know again that probably sounds like i've been really um ungrateful but i don't know i'd, I'd hate to be in a life where nothing's uh, unless it's gold it's not good enough and i won't be happy and i think god just just live life and be happy the, at everything the, i think the difficulty is as well though so i've been on probably both sides of it, it it's it's the external pressures and per- mm. perception that people have of you so mm. Again, I just think we're talking about trying to enjoy those moments. I remember for myself after London, every time I did try and enjoy myself, then straight away I'd have a former athlete. Former athletes love doing this, mm. love telling you that you're now not being as serious anymore. You're or now as professional. Not professional, mm. et cetera, all these sorts of things. Having no idea and actually probably forgetting exactly the sorts of things that they did. I mean, I by no means went crazy with the success at all of, of, of London. I literally was terrified about not sort of being professional so I basically didn't do the things I wanted to do and probably the advice I'd give myself now and probably any other young athlete is actually go and enjoy it like embrace mm. those moments of heaven you're you're probably a real rarity of somebody that can already see that and I still definitely believe it's probably because you have a far better grounding and understanding of the world than a lot of people that I think come through sport and I think this is possibly something where sport in general misses it because mm. We go through school nowadays being told that everybody's a winner and we shouldn't champion the champions. Then you go into professional sport and it's all about being a champion. And then it's nothing. And trying to then understand, deal with that and go through what life really is, I think is massively missed. I think probably professional sport needs to do more in order to help especially the young athletes, understand how things go. I don't know if it's just professional sport, though. It's business as well, isn't it? It's all walks of life where there's a high level of success to be achieved. And I think mm. that a lot of people think that they've got to give their absolute all yeah, difference... to be able to achieve it. And if they're enjoying it as they go, then they're missing out on some element of of dedication. And yeah. I say that Obviously, the difference is that with the business side of things is that at 30, 35, whatever it is, normally mm. it doesn't end. And mm. that's obviously the big problem. Like your life ends as a sportsman or woman at, normally around. Obviously, some going longer, of course. So then you have to figure out what comes next. Often people get themselves into a, a, a job path, I would say. And then that's they're, they're pretty mm. content. If that's what they want to do, they're pretty content. They can do that till they're 65, 70 or whatever else. And then that's that. The issue is, I, f- I, f- I think, in sport is that that's not there. Mm. And it goes. And it's like the rug being pulled out from underneath you. So having a grounding early on, I think, probably is, would be very useful for a lot of the athletes and clearly something that you have. Yeah, and it it comes it creeps up on you so quickly as well because like it's obviously usually in sport it goes in four year cycles with the Olympics, mm-hmm. and then that Olympic ends and it's like oh but because because you've not been you've been planning for the Olympics and training for that you're not thinking about going after the Olympics I need to be working out because you've got that to focus mm. on you've got to you put all your eggs in that basket so then when it all finishes and you just go. Oh, like, what do I do now? So there'll be so many athletes that are like that. And, and injuries can happen and all sorts and, and you just get chucked to the wolves, I guess. I don't do know. you think you've always been like that then? Do you think that's your natural mentality to enjoy things as you're doing them rather than take it all too seriously? Or is that because you had a bit of a life before coming into elite sport? Um, no, I think I've always been like that, mm. yeah. I'm quite happy, um, you know, like just going through life. I'm not really... Uh, I'm easily pleased, should I say, I think. <laughs> um, so, yeah, then everything else is so... Like, I, I literally do what I love every day for a job and it's mm. like, I wish it would never end, but it obviously will end. But I think I'll I'll be all right, you know, like I'll mm. I'll get another job or what have you and, and still in, enjoy life. But, yeah, I, don't, I think that I've always been like that and I, I'm just quite easily pleased. You're enjoying it and you say you're easily pleased, but at the same time, when you went from working in a supermarket to then training to become what you are now, Olympic champion, that will have taken such a lot of dedication and mental focus at a time when maybe if you're doing it all the way through your childhood, it's it's become a natural progression. Mm. I'm guessing if you've had a gap year, you're saying, you know, you put on a bit of weight, you're working in a supermarket... Then to switch that round to be an elite athlete is very difficult, is it not? Yeah, I mean, 
I probably missed out a little bit there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did. From supermarket to Olympic champion, <laughs> yeah. it's a long journey. <laughs> it's a few bits. Of it. No, so before, I, I, I was a, um, a swimmer from a young age till I was like 15, 16. So I'd kind of train 10 times a week. It were like excessive. That's probably why I've, I hate swimming, swimming yeah. because I've done so much of it. And one 10 could... times a week as a teen? Yeah, so I was going to school, getting up at four, going to the pool for two hours, going to school, coming back from school for another two hours, then going up. And like I met John when I was 15 and I'd like to see him on a weekend, just sleep all weekend because it's the only time that I could like catch up on my sleep. So it took over my life. And then I want all my friends are going out socialising, going out on the town, and they'd be like, you, you coming out on Friday? I'd be like, absolutely not. I've been up since four. Like, I, as soon as it hits seven o'clock, I'm off to bed. Mm. And it was just like crushing my social life. So I decided to quit. And also, I, I didn't I didn't find it that enjoyable. So I think I'd had that dedication and, and um, life before, and I enjoyed, like, training really hard. And um, that, that I think I've just got used to that. So then... I had like six or seven years off or whatever, just went from extreme exercise to nothing. I think it kind of just crept up. So I just kept doing a bit more and a bit more. And then I'd meet the girls. I'd got onto the uh, world-class um, program in Leeds. I was really lucky that I lived in Leeds mm-hmm. and then I got put on that. How uh, quickly were you on the world-class program then after um, you started? It took me a while. I was still working um full time when I did some of the triathlons and then I kind of got headhunted as a uh, domestic mm. role so you'd like a pilot athlete so I'd just for the Olympics they were experimenting with doing that so then because I was a good swimmer and a biker I was able to get on funding that way so at first I was just on funding on the GB squad just for helping others and so I kind of went to a uh, Rio prep camp with like Non and Vicky who went to the, the Olympic Games and I remember being on that thinking this is amazing like <laughs> and I, I learned so much from those guys and I had to learn quick I guess and I, it kind of just happened and you get amongst them and they kind of motivate you and um, you see what they're achieving and you think oh, I, maybe I could do that and then yeah the years pass and you just all of a sudden you kind of doing it for yourself and um I'm doing it every day and yeah I I but I do because I enjoy it and mm. I love it and if I didn't enjoy it I'd quit like swimming but I don't I really really love it and I'm very lucky I think what bit do you love do you love looking after yourself are you really competitive do you love the winning whenever you say you were motivated by Non and Vicky mm. seeing what they were doing what was what were you thinking I want to be an Olympic champion I want to push myself to be as good as I can be what was the motivation yeah I don't really I never go into any race I know this sounds ridiculous and people think I lie but thinking that I'm gonna win I literally just enjoy killing myself like I absolutely love it what you enjoy the pain yeah yeah obsessions Uh, I don't know just I I don't I I can't explain it I just that's the only thing how far you can go yeah yeah the limits of your body and how hard you can push and if can I keep going and yeah I just absolutely love it that's that's what I live for in in training I told you I'm like Lenny just like <laughs> <laughs> Lenny from of mice and men we should say we yeah, had a which is your nickname that you <laughs> but yeah so you know if somebody said just go hard for 10 minutes I'd be like all right and then just go for it <laughs> it's like that simple but and then afterwards I just love the feeling of Doing that and then getting better and seeing yourself Im- improve all the time. It's quite addictive. Or I was going to ask, are you quite obsessive? Are you quite addictive? Do you think in other areas of your life? Um, or do you have that tendency not, at least? I can't think of anything else that I'm that way with, really. But in, certainly in exercise, yeah. It's like when I have the off-season... I do enjoy it because obviously it's so intense and I really love going out drinking and, you know, just having mm. a normal life. But then I do miss the the effort and the actual... Like, the, I figured that out recently that, you know, that's what I miss about sport. I don't think I could just go back to going for a two-hour ride and just tootling along. No. And John's fuming about it because he hates it. Like, <laughs> he, he just wants to go for a nice, easy ride. <laughs> and I can't. So, <laughs> so when, You're a bit like that, though, aren't you? I, yeah, I, I, love, I love the pain that you get from, from training and stuff. But as, mm-hmm. as my body's got older, it's aged quite dramatically due to injuries and everything else. I'm interested to know what you think 
and how you think you'll deal with not having this as your life anymore mm -hmm. because if, if training is that much of an important part of it I mean not just it not being your full-time job anymore but then when your body starts to say no mm -hmm. as mine is most certainly doing mm -hmm. to me most of the time what what would you envisage happening with you then that's a great point. I've never really thought about that. Sorry, right. No, <laughs> Throw really. it out. Don't, 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 don't fess um, <laughs> I, um, I think I'll be fine not doing it to excess, but as long as I can do the intensity. But yeah, I didn't really think about injuries. Like, it's weird because I've had injuries over like the career I've had, and it's never really bothered me. Um, up until recently, when I got one before the Olympics, I broke my back at like. Five months before Olympic Games, I thought, oh, I thought my world were going to end. And it's so weird because I, I talk now that I'm like right laid back and nothing bothered me. And, you know, like it's only sport. Honest to God, I was like a different person at that point. It was like my world were going to end. And it was Why so did it hit you differently? Um, Because of the Olympics? Yeah, I think so. Because we'd been pre selected and then COVID happened. Mm. So in the, like, then we had like athletes saying these guys shouldn't be pre-selected because COVID and it's going to be two years by the time they do the Olympics, which is fair enough. Um, but obviously we couldn't race, so it was like, um, it was really difficult. Got through that, then I got injured and it was like, oh, great. So like the other teammates obviously don't want us to be selected anyway and then I'm injured. Um, and then I thought I'd got to that point, got to the Olympics, which was like amazing for me. And then to kind of like have it all pulled away from you was like, I didn't even consider it, you know, because I'd not had a major injury like that before. Um, and I knew it was possible to get back, but it was going to be like really hard. And so the, just the thought of every session meant everything. And I'd have to try like, although I try hard anyway, it was just going to be a really intense period. Um, and I, I wasn't sure if I, I would start or go to the Olympics. So I don't know, I think it was just that. Um, and yeah, I, I went from being like really laid back and never very unemotional. I don't really cry or anything to like crying like every day. Um, just being really down about it. It was really strange. And that like now I can't even shot. imagine it. Mm, it's really weird. So I don't know. Um, yeah, it just hits you in a different way. I Do guess, you fear that could come in once you retired? That's what was more of a common theme for you yeah me because it was really came out of the blue like i've never reacted like that before or anything so um i would would have said before that i'd have been fine but yeah it's really um strange that i reacted like that but yeah i don't know i it's think i will be fine no, so I don't no maybe not strange, strange yeah. at all i think i think it's no matter what i've been as laid back as as oh. you are or anybody as whatever else still the prospect of going to olympic games representing the country and potentially winning a medal it matters it no matter what it doesn't matter it's say if you're really intense or not it still matters and it is your life at the end of the day as well so then when you can't do it it's bloody hard yeah like, it really is hard yeah so i'm hoping that i will be all right and i'll i'll just yeah do it a little bit in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't, don't do that don't do that How bad did that get for you, though? I'm, I'm curious because if that's the first time that that's ever, anything's really ever hit you in that way because so many people will deal with incidents through their lives that just floor them out of the blue and they'll say, and we've, we've spoken to a few people, we spoke to Mark Cavendish about this, where he always thought he was mentally so resilient and emotionally so resilient and then all of a sudden, that's it. I mean, he suffered depression mm -hmm. um, and it can completely floor you if you're not the kind of person who you think it's going to happen to, mm. you know? Yeah, I don't, I mean, it didn't last long, you know, like I soon got over, it was, I, I guess it, it was the worst part was the time when, because it was my back, I, li I literally couldn't offload it either, so I couldn't walk, yeah. I couldn't do anything. So it went, it, went from, it went from like training 30 hours a week to not being allowed to stand up in the kitchen and cook or anything. Yeah. I just had to lay down. So I think once, like those few weeks had passed, everything was a progression. So then it's quite nice to then feel like you're moving forward and things are changing. Uh, but yeah, for those two weeks, I, I just, um, I don't know how I got through it to be honest. Just, um, I don't know. I just spent a lot of time on my own, I guess, mm. and uh, I didn't speak to anybody. Very, I, I was quite um, 
shut off. I didn't want people to know that I had this big injury because then obviously, you know, people try to get me deselected or something. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like you just don't want to talk about it to anyone. Yeah. If I like saw even family, I'd be like, just don't mention it. I'd rather just not talk about it. So I don't know. I think I just shut it away and, and dealt with it. And then um, it kind of all was fine in the end. And mm -hmm. I think John just had to keep saying you are right <laughs> <laughs> do, do you perfect. worry about what other people then in those situations what do you worry if people are saying things about you or speaking about you is, is that something you ever think about i think yeah I, I definitely felt like that i didn't want people to be talking about you know me and being injured and you know saying oh blah 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 so i think i definitely considered like what other people thought which have never really been like that um and yeah, like I said, it was just a different situation. I think it just with the Olympics and it being so near, it changed everything, um, which is a bit annoying. Cause I've <laughs> well, it is really... it's not because then you became Olympic champion, yeah. so it all worked out perfectly <laughs> yeah. in the end, didn't True, it? I don't know how, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot about that. Yeah, it did work out in the end. I mean, uh, But it was stressful. An interesting thought on that, though, as well, with, with regards to the back break and everything. I mean, do you think that maybe had, or played a part in actually becoming Olympic champion. I mean, it, maybe if that wouldn't have happened, do you see any form of outcome that could have been different to be an Olympic champion now? Yeah, I've, I've thought that a lot, actually. Um, you know, it could potentially have been a blessing in disguise. You know, like, I know it was bad at the time, but I, it could have happened just before the Games. You know, there's so mm. many other variables that had happened. But I think that I feel like I could get through anything now, injury-wise or... Um, you could throw anything at me and I feel like I'd be able to deal with it because it, it, I think that was such a stressful time that I'm hoping that I've kind of learnt from it and I'll do a better, not do a better job, but be able to cope with it a lot better and maybe talk to people and, you know, be a bit more open than I was then. Um, so you kind of learn from the things of the way you've reacted to to it. So I'm hoping that that's what I'll do in the future. And it's all of these life experiences, though, that build you up, don't they? And every time you go through something difficult, you have to remind yourself, well, I've been through something similar before and I've survived it. You know, the outcome is I got through it. So chances are I'll get through it again. I find that's a really powerful reminder to yourself sometimes. Yeah, definitely. And I think that with other athletes, you know, when they've got a little niggle, I think, listen. Mm. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> like, this one time, I literally didn't run for 15 weeks before the Olympics. You know, like things yeah. like that. And yeah. you do know that your fitness does, you can get back fit, fit again. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, I'd never, because my running is probably my weakest. I've never had like a an offload of running since I started. Um, so I didn't know how I'd react or anything. I thought, you know, because I struggle with running anyway. I thought, oh, bloody hell, this is not what mm. I need. Um but I dealt with it and I got through it and it's good to tell other athletes, you know, when they think that the world's going to end because they've got a little niggle and they're having mm. two weeks off. I think, don't you worry about it. You'll be absolutely fine. <laughs> I mean, they don't believe you. You know, mm. like when people say it to you, you're like, you'll be fine, you'll be fit. You're like, I won't. <laughs> yeah, and you don't know, <laughs> yeah. so you can't You've reassure no me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't tell mm. me that because I'm not. But yeah, so now I feel that I've got that experience and I can help others. But yeah, like I said, they probably think, Whatever you just say, <laughs> you just saying that to help me. But I do, I do believe it. Sport is such a huge part of your life, and it's clear you're talking about when you were a swimmer as well. How much of your life was dedicated to it? And I've read about how, as a kid, sport was your sort of escape. Really, was it because mm. you suffered severe dyslexia at school? Mm. Sport was what gave you confidence in life, was it? Yeah, definitely. When like I was at school and I struggled all through school, like all the way up until uh, sixth form. Um, and I think that when you're young, that's all you do. Mm -hmm. Other than obviously if you do mm. outdoor activities, but every day you go into school and you're getting judged on like academically. Mm -hmm. it, there's nothing really there to, like you do do P, but there's no test that much, you know, yeah. like in, in your daily life. Whereas, in education, you just every day. So it was like, you're just getting downbeaten every day if you're really struggling. And I don't think people think about it really. Um, you know, like I was having to take French and I think, bloody French, you can't even do English. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. like, I do not need that added stress. Um, so then when I did sport, it was like I was actually good at something and I got like 
confidence from it. And if I'd not have had that spot, I would have literally thought, what is wrong with me? Why am I like such a dialem do you think you were trying to prove people wrong a little bit as well maybe because i and having an older brother who's severely dyslexic as well when when not too dissimilar to our age i'm say we're still on the same we're about the same age oh sorry um <laughs> so, no, just being, uh, no but it was it was more considered you Nobody were not trying <laughs> but it was more considered you you weren't trying or yeah. it's it's not that there's something effectively there's something wrong with you we're all we, it's not about us teaching you or understanding you it's you being lazy. It's you not doing right. Do you think maybe sport was the out to prove people that actually, do you know what? No, I am good at things and I'm going to prove it through this. Yeah, yeah, because that's how I felt a lot of the time. And honestly, I tried. I'm not even mm. joking. Like the amount of effort I put into school and it were baffling me. You know, I'd get my, like, like, I don't know, my grades. And I was thinking, what is, why am, what, what is wrong with me? So yeah, when I did sport, I thought, this is it. I can actually try hard and show, like you said, people that, I am trying, but I'm just have just something wrong with me. <laughs> like I'm not. Yeah, I've got dedication. Then, I've got discipline. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm not just like sucking it off and and not listening. It's mine's very much my memory. So like I struggle mm. a lot with memory, and like I'm not joking. There's a lot of memory in school. That's all mm, you do. Yeah. You literally You're have to wrong. remember everything and learn. So then they think that I'm just not listening, and I think, well, I did listen and I got it, and then as soon as I walked out the door, I forgot it. Mm. But I can't help that. And it, it was really, really difficult. I just, I, I'd i love to help other kids that are in that situation. Because if they don't have sport, I don't know how they cope. Because, like, I'd be so, I was wouldn't be very confident. Because, like, in sport, it teaches you, like, communication. Mm, absolutely. And you can get through life, you know, like, people think, oh, you know, you actually, you know, you, you're not stupid. You're quite bright. And I think, well, no, I am. But I can communicate with people and that's my outlet, you know, like, I can... Have a laugh with people mm. and and yeah, commu- there's not much going on. Just communication. <laughs> I have got yeah. something yeah, else. Well, that's <laughs> life, you think. give me some ideas. Teamwork, right? work, discipline, Team motivation, work. Yeah. time management, <laughs> yeah. I've got more. I've got more. goal setting. Yeah. But yeah, this yeah. is the thing, though, because sport teaches you so much, and this is why I think it's so important for girls in particular, because I think. Boys are naturally drawn towards sport or they're naturally pushed or encouraged towards sport. And for girls, it's much more difficult because there are a lot of sports that are seen to be not very feminine. Mm. Then you've got the pressure, peer pressure and you've got social media and girls at a certain age are much more likely to drop off from is sport. 14 or something? Yeah, which, which, is, is, which is a huge percentage insane. of girls drop off. Yeah. And for me, I kept sport going all through my teen years. I'm so desperately grateful for it. And it's something I really try to encourage in my daughter because you will learn things for the rest of your life that you simply will not get in a classroom or in any other situation. And I just think for girls in particular, that's why it's so important to give you confidence for the rest of your life as well in your body mm. and knowing that it's not that it, that it belongs to you it's not for anybody else it's for you to build up your own strength and you know it's your own tool to use really yeah i i completely agree and i, I think it has got a little bit better i think we've mm. getting women into sport but i do think that they could try do little bits i don't know at schools and things like that to kind of encourage girls to um get into sports because even when i was young it was seen as I was like a tomboy, you know, there were no yeah. other girls other yeah. than me. Because I was good at sport, I was a tomboy. And it's like, well, well, maybe I am, but like the other girls could probably do it and enjoy it, but they don't want to get sweaty and go back to school or they don't want to get involved. And it's like... But also you're is... labelled. Yeah. You know, you're labelled as a yeah, tomboy yeah. rather than just being a girl who likes this, sport. that and the other and <coughs> sport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. All through my life I did. I mean, I did play football as well, which probably doesn't help, but... Yeah, I do think that there is a stigma and, like you say, you're labelled and it, we kind of need to get over those barriers yeah. a bit. But Because there might be girls, you know, that the same like me, dyslexia, but maybe sport would help them, but they're just, the mates are not doing it, so yeah. they don't want to be seen as a tomboy, so mm. they don't do it, whereas I, I had to, you know, well, not had to, but I, I just wanted to, and um, I, I'm glad I had the confidence to do that, but some might not, and then, you know, what they might not succeeding. But equally you've gone away from it and then also come back, which again, as we mentioned at the beginning, I think that's such a inspirational mm. story. But I mean, for everybody in general, not just women, the, the, the fact that you've, you've, you've sort of shown an aptitude towards sport, come away from it for a long period of time as mm. well, to then come back. I, I genuinely, I think that, that's, that's incredible. It's right? exceptional. It's it very really rare. Is. Yeah, very rare. 
thanks, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, yeah. It is a bit of a weird story. And I wish I could go into places and, you know, talk to people and try and inspire them, but there's just, I couldn't, I've just not got the confidence to stand in front of everybody or, you know, because a lot of ex-athletes do do, like, um, motivational speeches yeah. and stuff, but... It's, yeah, I think I might go into classrooms and help kids with dyslexia or something, but um, I would like to try and tell people because, you know, anyone could try to do it. It just takes a bit of dedication and love for a sport. See, I've read this about you, about you saying that you don't like public speaking and you don't like doing media and it's almost like you don't like the attention on you, you don't like the spotlight on you, but you're very, very good at it. <laughs> but you are. No, I, uh... Yeah, I don't like the attention. That's why, like, me and John have been together nearly 20 years and we won't get married because I couldn't cope with the <laughs> <laughs> really? yeah. I, 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 I well sympathise with that. I absolutely hated walking down the aisle. Yeah, can you imagine? Oh, it was, it was one of the worst moments of my life. <laughs> really? Yeah, I, don't know, I don't know if I've told my husband it that. Probably... I, ha- I hated it. I hated everybody looking at me really? and thinking that I was thinking I was the most beautiful I was ever going to look. <laughs> Because for a start, the hairdresser messed up my hair and I wanted to walk down the aisle going, I know, I know that I look a mess. <laughs> and it probably cost you a fortune yeah. as well. Yeah, the whole wedding did, yeah. So basically, we're just saying wedding's pointless. Yeah, yeah. Wedding's pointless, right, fine, good. We, got we that shouldn't say that, you're engaged, aren't you? Yeah, I meant to be getting married at some point, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, eventually. Oh, it's all right, yeah, we'll get there eventually. I like going, not that I'm uh, uh, itching for an oh, invite. Oh, that's to say, is <laughs> it... I mean, I do enjoy a wedding. You, you coming? You're in, right, oh. fine, good, done, done. You'd be good in the dance floor, I reckon. You'd be good for a party. Do you reckon? Yeah, I do, yeah. Absolutely no rhythm. Really? I mean, we're trying to like little, yeah, we just stand outside like little weirdos. <laughs> Do you not just get involved anyway? Like like more energy than talent, no? No. Like all like 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 <laughs> I'm quite a good mover. Thank you very yeah. much. I think so, yeah. Well, I dance a lot like around my kitchen. My kids yeah, think I'm really good. Yeah. They think I'm really good. So. Oh, that's yeah. good. They're, they're they seven do. and three. Yeah. <laughs> they think I'm good at everything. Yeah. Maybe it's I'll dance in front of them then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they'll love you. <laughs> yeah, I wish I've no rhythm, so I won't be going into dancing. That's so you'll sure. be doing Strictly anytime soon then. Absolutely not. It'd be a right laugh. <laughs> it would be a laugh, but no. Would you do Definitely. any reality TV? Would you do any of that side of it? You know, you've got your Olympic medal. That opens doors for you, I guess. Your whole different kind of way of well, life. Well, if anybody out there, yeah, no, <laughs> no one had asked, but yeah, I'd probably be up for anything but Strictly. Oh, oh right. Really? Probably, yeah, why not? I mean, yeah, what is there out there? Uh, well, he's done Master like... Chef. He's done all of them. Oh, yeah, that's pretty that. Well, pretty much. Anything Greg gets what? asked to do, he does. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just opening a few letters in a minute. And you've sort of stumped me slightly on that. Go enjoy the success, as we said. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, thank, thanks, Master Aura. Chef, <laughs> but you win everything, so it's okay. Uh, well. um, if you weren't a triathlete, if you hadn't entered that Sainsbury's mm. competition, if you like, all those years ago, what, what would you be doing? What would your life be, do you think? <sighs> do you reckon I'd have been promoted to, like... Deputy manager, at least, <laughs> at least area manager. Do you, at area, least. do you reckon? At least. Uh, how long have I, would I have been there by then? Um, yeah, I don't think I'd have been doing it. I'd, honestly, I'm not ambitious. Do, do you have any involvement with Sainsbury's? I know, no, I know, no, 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 no. I mean, have they ever like been like, oh, well done, sent you like, um, oh, I don't know, <laughs> taste <laughs> the difference, cookies or something. No, they are not actually <laughs> for you. Like, we used to trick there. I want to rewind to that. You just said you're not ambitious. I find that absolutely yeah, mind blowing when you're sitting here as an Olympic champion. Yeah, in sport, mm. but in normal. But surely you would have found a thing. Do you reckon? Like, I don't yeah, know. I, I don't I think it like, would. Look, you're an Olympic champion. Mm. Like, there, there, there would have been a thing that you would have found, and you'd have gone. Yeah, I want to do this. Yeah. And I want to do the best I possibly can. Even if you're not saying those words to yourself as such, but you push yourself. Because if you love the feeling of killing yourself in training, then 100% you would find a thing that you would do and you would really work hard at it, surely. Do you reckon... I Documentary don't making, there you are. Or, just... or do you think it would just oh, have had to be Deliveroo. Just really going <laughs> for it. Fastest Deliveroo rider. Imagine that. Around the city I wonder if that's a thing. 
Is that a thing, do you reckon? Do you reckon they have an internal thing where oh, I bet awards so. the no, fastest delivery? Oh, yeah, yeah, that. definitely. And but probably no, bonuses right. as well. You'd love to challenge them, already know. <laughs> I can see you're, you're thinking... I, I think I'd be quite good I, in the delivery. There we are. Um, if anybody I'll from delivery is listening... Race. Oh, hello, there's a little... <laughs> oh, all of you now being challenged. Well, they can't say no to a challenge. I know, you, I know. You will it's find impossible. Out this later, so yeah. don't challenge me to anything because I'm, I'm my own worst enemy. Um, <laughs> but you think that... You, do you think you've just then... Luckily, I guess, find your niche because yeah. that's also very rare. And I think a lot of us go through life mm. wanting to find the one thing that A, we're brilliant at and B, we love and C, we get the opportunity to do. I've... That's an incredibly rare combination. It is. And I honestly think that's the truth. I really have found my niche and just like at least I've been able to... Um, kind of be dedicated and do it but yeah I've definitely feel like I'm so lucky that I've come across it um, because I honestly don't think I would have done anything else <laughs> when you do I retire really do, do you think you'd stay in the sport then is that is that something you've considered I don't know I mean everyone always says it you're going to go into coaching mm. wherever it might be but would is that something that genuinely interests you well it's funny you should say that because no originally because I find it really difficult to um, I don't know if you've noticed that my describing words I really struggle with so I, like People have said, oh, you could do coach. I think, oh, yeah, I'll stand there. And I'll be like, um, you know the... Um, <laughs> and then you put it in the... Yeah, and they'd be like, what is this? Might be quite refreshing, actually. <laughs> I think I quite like that. Yeah, they're all like, oh, God. Um, and then, recently, I did my level two coaching. I loved it. Oh. And it was actually a lot easier because I knew the sport. And I thought, God, there's actually something that... I I know so much about naturally, just because obviously I've done it, and I should hope I do know about it. <laughs> but then telling other people about it, I found it really easy, and I really enjoyed it. So potentially, I would like to stay in the sport in some sort of realm. But um, yeah, I haven't said definitely no to coaching now. I've definitely been more open to it. Um, so that was quite nice for me because I thought, ah, oh, I've actually might have something else that I could do. It was really re refreshing. Jess, this is my first time meeting you and I'm absolutely blown away by you. I can't believe... Well, because you sound so surprised by yourself that you <laughs> find such a talent for something that you clearly work incredibly hard at and become Olympic champion. And then you're surprised that you're good at coaching. <laughs> yeah. uh, in a world, though, genuinely, in a world where... where I feel like we're constantly bombarded by people who overplay their talents and abilities. You're such an exception in that respect. I hope you never mm -hmm. change. It, it, but I also hope you realise how great you are because oh. it's very rare to be so good at something and to be constantly surprised by it. Yeah. I, th I just think it's from confidence from when I was young, honestly. Mm. I just feel like I've never got that confidence. And John will say this, I think he gets sick of it, you know, he's like, oh, here we go, you know, because I'll just say that I, I can't do it or whatever and he's just like, oh, here we go again sort of thing. But that's genuinely what I think and, you know, like people might think I put it on. Certainly in race, I said to you, mm. you know, like I might um, kind of put it down a bit, but it's how I actually think and uh, I don't really know how to change it. You know, like people will say, well, it's you know, working. If you, yeah, if you, well, this is what I it. think. Mm. Yeah, because I think, well, if I go into a race going, right then, guys, I'm going to absolutely nail this. I'm going to win. And then I come eighth, I'll be like, oh, do you know what I mean? I just, yeah. if it, it, it's how I work, and I just think, I don't, I don't have to be like saying that I'm amazing or but that I'm going to win to to do well. Do you think that slightly comes from, do you just have an internal belief in your ability though is that you obviously you have to know that you're good at it yeah <laughs> the yeah, fact yeah. that you're an Olympic champion <laughs> means that you're good at yeah. it but do you think that maybe that's part of it you're, you're just very content with knowing that you've worked incredibly hard you've got ability but you're also going to enjoy it so I mean you, I guess you don't have to go and shout to everybody you're going to win but yeah. I mean there's got to be a level of that as well I mean mm. it's, it's a different way of of having self-belief and the way that manifests itself. Some people feel maybe because of nerves, they have to shout about it. Mm. Whereas obviously in, in your case, complete opposite. But you have to know you're good. Yeah, no, I do know. And I think I do have the talent, like a, a different... Because I think you do have to, to kind of get to that place where, you know, you're hurting. It, it, like, yeah, I see it in John, you know, like he'll just stop straight away or other people, whereas I just keep it going. And I think that is a... I think you do have to have that sort of talent and belief in yourself. And I, I think that's all it is. I literally stand on the start line knowing that I literally cannot try any harder. Mm. And I know that I will in a race. So then I don't need to think, 
am I going to win? Because it's like, well, maybe I will, maybe something else will happen. But there's no point thinking about that. All I need to do is do my best. And then, so I, I don't know, I think I just keep it simple. Do you know what I love about that, though? I think these days in particular, we are so insatiably hungry for formulas of success, yeah. aren't we? And we've got, you know, top selling books telling us how to succeed in life or how to succeed in business or how to succeed in sport, podcasts doing the same. And actually just doing it your way yeah. is the best way, isn't it? Yeah. And that's why sometimes I question myself because I think I don't want to say it because mm. then people will say, well, you're not, you're never going to make it. You're never going to be yeah. a champion because they've got to be ruthless. They've got to be, you know, saying that they're going to win. And I think, well, if that's the case, then maybe I won't be. But mm -hmm. I have, I've been successful. So I, I don't see why I should change what I do. So I just don't. <laughs> I hope and you I don't. don't. <laughs> it's, it's just an easy way to do it, like you say, because it's my way. So mm. I just think, whatever. But I think that's probably for, for there are going to be some people listening who know that they're probably working incredibly hard at what they do, but maybe others are telling them the opposite. And actually, they'll they'll probably take a lot from that. Actually yeah, because actually often not... they're told you're too kind or you're yeah. too nice or exactly. you're too this, that or the other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or you've missed this out. You haven't mm -hmm. didn't do enough of that, etc. But if you know, if you have the luxury, I think it's a really it's an amazing thing to be able to do because I think often. In sport in particular, and again, that's what I've obviously come from so I can talk about, it. there are moments of doubt because you, you just think, oh, what if maybe I didn't do enough there or didn't do it? If you can calm your mind enough, and it goes across everything, I think, like, then this transcends sport. If you can calm your mind and have confidence in knowing that you've worked hard enough mm -hmm. and done everything you possibly can, mm -hmm. then you can have a, a sort of a zeny moment, really. Yeah. I mean, it's just get out there and do it. And fundamentally, I look, for anybody involved in sport, it's a massive luxury to be involved with sport, mm. really, because of course you work incredibly hard, dedication, etc. What an incredible life and job it is, and I think sadly not enough athletes realise that, mm. or they realise yeah. it far too late and never enjoy a moment of it. So, yeah, I think it definitely can go above and beyond sport, but I mean it's it's a joyous way to be. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I agree with you as well. I just feel so lucky to be in sport mm -hmm. and enjoying it, and yeah, I feel like. I've been given a gift and I'm just overwhelmed by it, really. Honestly, it's the best thing ever. I don't know what I want to say. Beautiful. That's brilliant. Jess, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. That was so lovely. That was such a refreshing chat. Oh, thank okay. you. I'm glad. Amazing. Thanks for having me. Not Honestly, at all. coming to Leeds. <laughs> I can't believe it. Like, you're Leeds just is lovely. <laughs> As I said, I hope you're interviewing other people up in Leeds as well. No, we're, we're, we're here for you. We're literally here That's for you. That's mental. I can't believe it. Well, thanks. You're worth it. Oh, thank, well, you. thank you. Well, that was Jess Learmont. Then what I take away from all of that is that you're never too old to try something new and to try to boss something new, whether it's a change in career, whether it's something that you've got as an unfulfilled goal, just give it a go. Yeah, massively. And I think the other thing is as well with that, it's not worrying about maybe go, stepping away from your dream for a period of time as well. Yeah. It doesn't have to be constant 24 7 all the time finding that life performance mix and as I say stepping away that can really reset your brain and your mind and, and how, how and where you want to take things and then come back into it it's clearly not too late if you're over the age of 18 or whatever because there's a lot of people that put so much emphasis on that if you're not professional at a, at a teenage eight, uh, years you're done mm -hmm. and that's not the case it's been proven you can become an olympic champion stepping away from the sport and coming back in and actually learning a whole new sport. So it's very, very impressive. Do you know what I also loved about that conversation actually and something that's come back to me an awful lot was the joy that she took from the process and actually enjoying it as she went. And we are very privileged in our job to do something that most people will think of as being a lot of fun. And it is a lot of fun. But sometimes, well, not sometimes, I'm going to be honest, all the time, I put so much pressure on the outcome mm -hmm. and so much pressure on whether it's going to be a success or not. Like this podcast, for example that you forget to actually enjoy it all as it goes and then leave the result to itself. And it's something actually to, that takes me back to things that Sir Chris Hoy said as well, just going with the process and leaving the outcome to itself. And I've been trying to teach myself that since Sir Chris, but certainly since Jess in particular, of making the most of, the reason we do most things other than maybe our jobs, you know, if you don't like your job, then that is unfortunate, but there are other things that you do in your life, your hobbies or whatever, 
but we're so goal oriented that we forget to enjoy it or we forget why we started it in the first place. So actually enjoying it as you go is a massive, massive part of happiness, really, happiness, isn't it? Really, isn't it? Yeah, completely. I agree. Yeah. Can't add to that because it's absolutely perfect. But what we can add, I guess, is um, probably the most important part of the entire podcast, really, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. But I wanted to, one of the things we were just chatting about um, before we started recording was things that we had tried to learn. Um, as oh, yes. adults and switching disciplines. Mine was, I started I started <laughs> teaching myself the piano last year and I was messaging my friend, right, mm -hmm. who's very ambitious and driven. And I said, like, I'll never get to play Carnegie Hall, but I'll have a little go. And she said, why not aim to play Carnegie Hall? And I thought, you know what, Rianne? I'm going to aim to play Carnegie Hall. And I've still mastered one piece. Actually, that's not true. I haven't mastered it. I play one piece very badly. But you know what? My Carnegie Hall dream is still alive. Uh, and you want count. to be fluent in French. That's your next thing. That is the aim. But look, obviously, that can happen for you. I think learning the piano is something that definitely... You could you could do that at, at 60 next year. So you never know. <laughs> Just, who knows when it do can come Do you know what? It's around. never too late to learn to be kind. I Either, Greg. That's what you can take I'm from only, all of this. You no, know, it's because it's not true. Uh, well, but I know no, it's, it's not true because I'm not going to be 60 next year. <laughs> but it's you're still right. a long way you off. And if I was going to be 60 next year, that's also fine. <laughs> I think I've triggered something. <laughs> um, no, but you're right. You mentioned me trying to learn French. No one cares. I mean, I've picked up about <laughs> one word so far because just not having the time. But it's something that definitely I want to pick up at some What's point. What's the word? Is it clean so, or dirty? Is the um, question. It's, it's Oh, no, no, it's clean. Oh, right. So I was, I was thinking, have I learned how to say clean or <laughs> does I? Neither, actually. Um, so it shows how well it's going. Um, but no, you're right. You, 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 there's never too late. You should aim for these things and take those risks. Absolutely yeah. take those risks. And just enjoy the French learning Absolutely. as you go. It's going to uh, one battle, though, that we have been not really taking much enjoyment from, let's be honest, unless one of us are winning, um, is, of course, the latest instalment of Rock, Paper, Scissors. I might have enjoyed this one. Spoiler alert. So, what we do now at the end of every chat yeah. is we play, are you ready? Yeah. Rock, paper, scissors. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> do you know, everybody's all, faces, all the guest faces, they all look they're like, oh God, what are we about to do? No, we, we uh, ham it up totally and then everybody's like, oh, fine. Then right, then. Oh, no. <laughs> but it's then, right, so all it takes is painfully seriously. Oh, shut up. So, and I've, I have, and no, I just always have to warn everybody. No, no, um, yeah, you've I just already enjoy, heard him yeah, right, boasting. I yeah, already, he's I, winning. Yeah, I just thank enjoy, you, Jess. I just yeah. enjoy winning. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so, I love losing. Um, <laughs> which you've done a lot. Of exactly. Um, what so, you need to do is just know that you've done your best. Oh, <laughs> just enjoy the moment. Just enjoy it. I'm in a recording just studio relax. and he's a two Olympic champions. You've done it this before. This is true, actually. I can lose rock, paper, scissors. You can, yeah. That's all right. You've been relaxed. Yeah. You're ready yes. for it. It's yes. all right. Yes. Let's go. Yeah, shut up. I know inside you're not thinking about that <laughs> at, at all. At all. Okay. I'm thinking, okay, is this my winning formula? Is this I'm going to win? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, ready? Right, okay, so we're going to, you call it this time, okay? Okay. Ready? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh, I'm out! <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh! Yes! Do you know what I've just done? What? I overthought our, our previous one, uh, and I thought I would... Nobody cares. Was, okay, anyway, right. <laughs> Boring. <laughs> I'm out. Right, you ready? Okay. Don't we tell them what we win? No, not bother. No, oh, no, oh yeah, there's a podcast. Yes, yeah, so from Greg's out. That's well, what we need to do. It was, it was two, two, two rocks, rocks, two rocks, and a, and, uh, and a scissors. And a scissors. Okay, oh, ready? Go by. Okay. Oh, oh I'm wrong! Yes! yes! Oh, I had a feeling. Oh, I had a feeling. See, I got a feeling. You were relaxed. Ooh. You knew you'd do it. <laughs> you know, That's just, what it is. What I actually, I'm not joking. I put myself in the zone. Did you? I thought well, I'm gonna win. This. I, we've not had a single guest win, win one yet. I know. And I was really, really? hoping you would. Not one. Oh, of course you were hoping she would, because she was in the final with me. Yeah, yeah, I really. Yeah, was. it's been me or Greg the whole way. That's really annoying, that isn't is. it? Yeah. Uh, no, but thank you. Say, sis, thank you for letting me win. Yeah. Oh, I'm you're welcome. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. He did tell me to do two, two rocks <laughs> when he came in. 